All right, so this week we've been going over sequences and series and summations, and I know all the language and the way it looks has been a little bit confusing possibly. So this video specifically is gonna help us write explicit and recursive formulas for arithmetic sequences. Now, arithmetic, I know it sounds like a really strange word, but it's just another fancy way to say a linear pattern. So when we see sequences that are adding a number every time, we're subtracting a number, a number every time. We know that's linear. Just another fancy way we can say is that that pattern is also arithmetic. So right here, I see that 17 plus three gives me 20, plus three gives me 23, and plus three gives me 26. Since I'm adding something every time, it's linear or arithmetic. Now, what we need to know how to write both our recursive and our explicit formula. The recursive formula always needs an initial condition, which we're going to call A1. The little number down here is counting which number in the sequence or which term in the sequence. I see right here I have a first term, a second term, a third term, and a fourth term. I always want the first one, A1, which I see here is equal to 17. And then the actual recursive formula is always a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1. And that's just talking about the previous term. So that your thinking should be, if you're at 20 and you go back to the previous term, what did you have to do to get to 20? We already saw we had to add 3. So my recursive formula will be plus 3. Because I went to the previous term and I added 3. Now the explicit formula is a little bit different. The explicit formula is going to look like a linear equation that we're used to writing in our algebra classes. So it's still gonna be a sub n, but now we need a classic y-intercept and slope. Now right here, I see that this sequence starts at one, but arithmetic and linear equations and formulas always start where the sequence is zero. So we have to go back one step to get the starting value for the explicit formula. So I'm gonna go back three to 14, and my explicit formula will be 14. Now I'll look at the pattern, and we're adding three every single time, so it will be plus three in. And now I'm done. Now I want you to pause the video, and please try to see if you can write the recursive formula and the explicit formula for this sequence. Oh, whoops, watch out guys. So, recursive formula. We need the initial condition, which just is a fancy way of saying, what is the first number, the first term, in my list of numbers? So I'm gonna go ahead and label it, one, two, three, four. My first term, my second term, my third term, my fourth term. I see clearly my first term is 35. My recursive formula always asks me, what did I do to n minus one, the previous term, to keep on going? So if I go over to four and I go to the previous term, ask yourself, what did I do to get to five? And if I see here, it looks like we're subtracting 10 every time. And since we're subtracting 10 every time, that's a linear pattern or an arithmetic sequence. So I'm just gonna be able to write minus 10, and my recursive formula is done. Now, once again, the explicit formula is a little bit different. It's still gonna be a sub n, but now we need to be able to plug in any of those numbers to get the result. And like I said over here, the explicit formula, the starting value is at zero. So we need to go back one step. So since I'm subtracting 10 this way, if I go back one step, I need to add 10 to get to 45. And it looks like I'm just subtracting 10 every time. So I'm gonna subtract 10 in. Now a helpful mental trick is to check to see if your formula works. The third term is 15, we see that. So when I plug three down here, I should get 15 as my answer. So if I do that, plug the three in, negative 10 times three, is negative 30. 45 minus 30 is 15, which is we see is true. 
So you know you wrote a good explicit formula if you can test it and it gives you what you know is true.